guys, so I thought that today I would film a favourites video. It has been months, many, many, many months. I don't think, in fact, I've filmed one of these this year um, since I filmed a favourites video. But I think with everything going on, I really want to celebrate the small joys and share some of the things that have been getting me through and that like have been putting a smile on my face or like giving me comfort and distractions. And comfort and joy seems like an odd word with the amount of sort of crime mystery thriller TV show and books on this list. <laughs> but that's kind of been helping me. So I'm gonna jump straight in and just share with you some of my favourite things from the past couple of months with TV shows being first. So I have been watching two main TV shows. There's two main TV shows I've just been completely absorbed in. The first of those is Elementary. So I only started watching Elementary last year even though it's been going for years. It's based on Sherlock Holmes except that it's set in modern day New York. Now Sherlock Holmes is still British, however Dr Watson is American and is also a woman played by Lucy Liu. And they meet at the beginning of the series when Joan is enlisted by Sherlock's father to be his sober companion because he's just got out of rehab. And I love that that premise picks up on some of the themes from the original books, but also explores recovery. And that's one of my favorite twists on this series. I was a little bit nervous to start watching Elementary, which is why it took me until last year because it is quite a massive change given the original books that it's based on and I'm a huge Sherlock Holmes fan. However, there is something so endearing about this series. Lucy Liu and Jamie Lee Miller's chemistry on screen is brilliant. They play those characters so well and they work so well together. I love the strength of their friendship bond. It's so nice to see them working together. And I've just become entirely addicted to this series. So much so that since I started watching it last winter, I have watched all seven seasons. Well, that's not quite true. I have four episodes left. I've been so scared to finish off the series and have no more elementary left because I have just come to love it so, so, so much. But I do have four episodes that will probably get watched over the course of April and I just wanted to let you know how much I loved it in case you haven't watched it yet, if you like crime procedurals, if you like Sherlock Holmes but are nervous because this one's set in modern day New York, definitely give it a chance. I think it's a brilliant show. I've also been loving The Unforgotten. So this is a British crime drama with three seasons at the moment and each season has a six episode arc where one mystery is being solved over those six episodes. And it is one of the most clever crime procedurals I have seen come out in the past few years. The whole premise, which, you know, isn't that unique, you know, a sort of um, six story arc mystery, but the way that they blend all the plot lines and the characters together and it all unravels as the series goes on is so, so, so clever. I just think it's been so well scripted, it's so well acted, the mysteries are so detailed and I've just been so impressed by it. I started watching this one because my friend Jen was talking about it recently and I can't believe it's taken me so long. My mum and I have just binged all three seasons that are currently available since I came up to Edinburgh and I'm really hoping that season four does come out in the summer or later this year because I just love it. It's brilliant. You always follow the main detective during each series but also you follow a cast of new characters who are somehow involved in a historical crime. So the crime could have taken place 10 years ago, it could have taken place 30 years ago but you don't know how they're all tied up in it and all the secrets unravel as the police investigate and we follow all of those different strings whilst they tie together and like I said I just think it's so 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 clever so I've been loving both of those series. I haven't watched a ton of films recently the only film I've watched and enjoyed of late was Fighting With My Family which is based on the true story of a female wrestler from Norwich who sort of climbed up the wrestling ladder and became massive in WWE. Now this is not um, something I know much about I don't watch wrestling but I loved this film I just thought it was such an endearing story, it was comical but emotional in all the right places and it was the perfect kind of escapism at the moment. I watched that on my birthday, it was my birthday treats. So I don't have tons to say about it but I would say it's worth checking out and giving a watch. Now for books you probably won't be surprised by my first favourite because I raved about it in my vlog where I read books that my subscribers chose for me and that is the Lumberjanes comic book series. Oh my goodness, is this comic book series incredible? How did it take me so long to read it? I know everyone has been raving about it and recommending it to me 
for years now, well maybe a couple of years, I can't remember when it first came out, but it's had a lot of buzz and it's always been in the background of my mind, but I never made it a priority. But I am so pleased that you guys pushed me to pick that up because it's brilliant. It's about a group of five friends at a girls like scouting camp, the group's called the Lumberjanes in the forest. And they get into all sort of hijinks, they're very independent and wild and inquisitive, but these hijinks lead them down a slightly supernatural path. They encounter some strange magical creatures, some ancient lost underground passageways and it's so much fun. It's such a brilliant like balance of humour, friendship, a little bit of that like paranormal magical element but also just all of like the contemporary fun about a young group of friends living in the 21st century and I just loved it. The illustrations are also perfect, they go so well with it. I, I love, 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 love the way this series is illustrated and I'm so pleased that I picked it up. Jumping off that theme, I'm also really pleased that I read Truly Devious when I was filming that video, so this was another book that I read because you guys picked it for me in my reading the books my subscribers picked for me vlog. I feel like that was a really long-winded way to say that. But it's a YA crime series, it's a trilogy, and I've actually now read the first two books in it. I am really looking forward to reading slash listening to the audiobook of book three, but I'm also trying to like save it and not rush straight into it because I loved books one and two. I started off enjoying the series thinking this is interesting, but by the end of book one I was completely enraptured. It's about Stevie who is a new attendee at an elite boarding school. It's elite because it only takes in students with passions and um, skills in certain areas. It's not about money, you don't have to pay to go there, but you have to prove that you deserve to be there. And Stevie has gotten to go to the school on the back of her interest in crime solving. And there's a historical case associated with this boarding school that Stevie is obsessed with. She's obsessed with truth crime and she's convinced that if she goes to this boarding school, she'll be able to solve it. One day she'd also like to be an FBI agent and we follow Stevie in the 21st century as well as incidents from the original crime in the 1930s and we flip backwards and forwards between the two as Stevie learns more about the original crime, makes friends at the school and some dark and intriguing things happen in her contemporary surroundings and it's such a nice blend of old mystery, new mystery, bit of teenage angst and romance and I, I really enjoyed that whole balance of things. I love me a YA mystery. This is another one that's had a lot, a lot of raving about it since it came out and I'm so glad that you guys gave me that push again to pick it up. I'm enjoying that it's also a three book arc and that it wasn't all wrapped up in book one because it's just made me really chew on the mystery and get really involved in all of the intrigue and questions and I haven't actually read a YA mystery series before that's taken place over more than one book so that's a concept that I'm really endeared to now and I think it gives time for the relationships between the characters and for the mystery to develop so really enjoying that. I then like to mention a YouTube channel. Now this is not a small YouTube channel, you may very well be aware of it already but I have been binge watching videos from it over the past few weeks and that is Plumbella. So Plumbella or Jessie is a sim YouTuber or a gamer YouTuber. She also live streams different games on Twitch but every now and then I go down the rabbit hole that is Sims YouTube videos, people doing live plays of The Sims or silly conspiracy videos about The Sims and just generally exploring the world of The Sims um, on YouTube and I'd never actually watched Plumbella before until a couple of months ago and I cannot believe it because even if you don't play The Sims, even if you've never played The Sims and have no interest in The Sims, please let me recommend this channel to you because she is so engaging and absolutely hilarious that I just love every piece of content she puts out. Watching people play The Sims always makes me want to play The Sims, I will say that, so I have been playing The Sims myself, but I still think you could enjoy her content even if you're not a Sim player because she's just so entertaining. I love her editing style, I love her humour, I love her personality, and like I said, I have been watching everything she's uploading of late because she's uploading a lot of content at the moment which is brilliant given that we're all stuck inside but I've also just been going back and watching a lot of her old content which has just given me a lot of escapism and I've been really enjoying it. Personally as well I've been really enjoying making reading vlogs for this channel. I have been uploading pretty regularly over the past few weeks because as much as watching YouTube is an escapism for me, making content is also an escapism for me. I get to read interesting books, focus on what I'm making and then engage with all of you guys which is so 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 
wonderful and making reading vlogs has been a lot of fun over the past few weeks. You might have noticed that I've definitely made more of those than I usually would but having that structure to my reading, having goals for my reading and checking out interesting things based on your recommendations or lowest rated books on my TBR or what have you has just been so much fun and both reading and filming for those videos as well as then chatting with you guys in the comments has just been an absolute favourite over the past few weeks. I feel so lucky to have this platform and to be able to communicate with so many different people across the world about literature during everything that's going on. I'm so so lucky and so so glad of that. So should we just say YouTube and the internet and all of the wonderful people on it like you guys is a favourite. Cheesy I know but true. Something you may also have seen in some of those reading vlogs is that I have been doing a lot of jigsaw puzzles so I've also been sharing some of my jigsaw puzzles on Instagram stories but I have massively gotten back into jigsaws of late. Honestly I was never a massive jigsaw person. I started doing them a little bit more last year and really enjoying it but I have done three whole jigsaw puzzles over the past month which might not seem like that much to somebody. I don't know how much uh, regular jigsaw puzzlers do but that's a lot of my time and a lot of my energy and I don't think I'd ever finished an entire jigsaw puzzle in my entire life until a few weeks ago. So I have not been able to stop doing jigsaw puzzles. They're almost like meditation for me. I can stick an audiobook on or a bit of TV on in the background and just really focus on putting those tiny little pieces and those tiny little holes and it takes ages but I can stretch over a few days and I've just been loving it and I feel so lucky because my dad was so into jigsaw puzzles, something that I never really shared with him when he was alive. We tried to do jigsaw puzzles together a few times when I was a kid and I just got incredibly frustrated with the whole process because I was a very impatient child. <laughs> um, but he used to do jigsaw puzzles all the time, it was like his form of meditation and I feel now that I can really understand why he enjoyed doing jigsaw puzzles so much and because he was so into jigsaw puzzles he used to pick them up in charity shops all the time and then once he'd and then once he'd finished a jigsaw puzzle he'd either give it back to a charity shop or put it in the attic in case he ever wanted to do it again so I have like a pile of my dad's leftover jigsaws in the attic that he would have done when he was still alive that I've been able to bring down and do myself which is obviously great because I can't just buy like a whole horde of new jigsaw puzzles for the next few months and the charity shops are not open so I just feel super grateful to my dad for having left all those jigsaw puzzles and for giving me something that I can focus on at the moment and serves as a little bit of a distracting hobby and I've just been really really enjoying it I just held this random one up because it's the one I'm currently doing I've almost finished it it's a antique world map this is been the most challenging one I've done so far of the three since I got here. It's really, really hard, but I'm almost there. So yeah, if you, like me, never really saw yourself as a jigsaw puzzle person, but could maybe get your hands on some jigsaw puzzles at the moment, I would highly, 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 highly recommend it. Um, but I guess those are my main favourites of late. Those are a lot of the things that have been bringing me joy, have been distracting me, have been providing me escapism. But I can only do with more things like that. So please let me know what some of your favourite things have been from the past few weeks and months in the comments down below, whether they be TV, film, books, hobbies, internet, online spaces, or just like little moments in every day. I would love to hear from you. And hopefully I've provided a few of you with some new recommendations as well. But until next time, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye guys!